Palkia Origin and Dialga Origin might have some of the quickest falls in popularity as legendary Pokemon with any sort of competitive scene. It wasn't until Kind Squared created Uber's UU that at least Palkia Origin was rediscovered as a powerful Pokemon to use. But what about the official singles metagames where both of them reside in Ubers? Well, they are both not viable. In a tier full of legendary Pokemon, they are being outclassed by things like Glamora, Claude Sire, and Ribambi. No hate to any of these Pokemon, but these are alternate forms of powerful box art legendaries. And if there's anything we learned with alternate forms as of late, they're usually really powerful. But these two seem to have immediately fallen to the opposite spectrum. Let us look at Diago Origin, as its fillers are much more complex than Palkia's. Diago Origin, as stated, is the original form of Dialga. And other than the design, the only really subtle tweaks to this Pokemon is its stat distribution, while nothing else was really changed. Origin though becomes a bit more bulky, which for a Steel and Dragon type Pokemon helps any sort of way. But the problem with this is that I feel it's too subtle, almost as if they were correcting a mistake they made years ago, as that they only changed the attack and special defense. At least with Garatina Origin, it was much more clear from the start that this is the more offensive version compared to its counterpart where it's more defensive. But Dialga and its origin form seem more of a correction than a clear distinct improvement. Anyways though, Dialga Origin as well, just like Garatina, is forced to hold a special item to increase its stab move power in Dragon and Steel, meaning it's not free to hold other special items in that slot. So, I guess retrospectively speaking, Origin is technically stronger and bulkier, but at the cost of its item slot, which is very huge. Nevertheless, with this type of bulk and power, Dialga Origin is said to be used in a similar fashion to Garatina Origin, a semi-slow dragon type with really good bulk and power. But this all comes crashing down rather really quickly. Diago Origin on paper seems like it wants to emulate Giratina, and Giratina is primarily known to be this utility bulky defensive stall mon in a sense that offers a way to get rid of hazards in the metagame. It is a very strong glue piece that is used on basically almost every team, but Diago Origin has a better typing, so it seems as if we put Giratina Origin out of business till we come across its ability and move pool. Now, it's no secret Giratina's ability of Levitate is far better than Pressure, who only offers offers to reduce PP, where Levitate gives a huge immunity ground type. Giratina as well is poised to be successful because of its complementary move pool. You see, if we take a look at Origin's move pool, there's a lot of offensive powerful moves to use from Flamethrower to Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, Earth Power, etc. It looks like a very hyper offensive Pokemon just by looking at its move pool. However, its typing and stats give off another impression, and that it's a bulky wall and annoying to take down. The only notable utility moves it can use is like Roar, Thunder Wave, Stealth Rocks, and Dragon Tail. Now, looking at Giratina Origin as the comparison, it has moves like Roar, Thunder Wave, Will O Wisp. Hex to complement its Will O Wisp and Thunder Wave, Dragon Tail, Defog, while also having strong offensive moves of his choice if he really wants to as well. Just by that, you would go with Giratina Origin as it fulfills the role that Dialga Origin wants to provide in a much better fashion while still having really good stats and a decent defensive typing to make it really legit. And immunity to normal and ground as well is huge, and although Dialga might have a better typing on paper, these are some huge factors when we're looking at a defensive utility kind of niche Pokemon such as Origin Dialga and Origin Garatina. And just looking at it from a pure offensive stance, since it has that huge 150 special attack stat, it's a Dragon type that is off rip competing with the likes of Coridon, Miraidon, Black Kyurem, Eternatus, etc. All prominent and more powerful Dragon type Pokemon in their respective roles, as they are fast and powerful, or in Kyurem's case, they exploit Pokemon through their setup moves and more. Dialga doesn't have notable setup moves to get to that position of these Pokemon, and really just relies on its raw stats to compete with these hyper offensive dragons. Origin Dialga with its move pool and ability and role as a Pokemon really stems from all these problems. Its move pool is not complementary to the role that it seemingly gives off to Garatina Origin and also doesn't have complementary setup moves to put it over the top for competition. Thus, while its crystal does make it more powerful, these problems are still there that are actually still from its base form that really didn't get improved in its origin form. I believe if Game Freak committed to its heaviness and bulk as just a logistically looking at a Steel and Dragon type Pokemon, essentially just making it really slow yet bulky and powerful, it might have more usage than before because you can at least see its move pool complements its stats much better. Or just giving it better utility moves to utilize might just give it a chance to compete with Origin Giratina in that role. Another thing is that I don't get why Game Freak couldn't give Origin Dialga a new ability like they did with Giratina, that might have also went a long way in helping its viability in some fashion, but by not doing so, you also hamper it defensively when compared to its other peers. It's in an awkward position where it could do both, but lacks notable key points in both categories, making it a weird origin Pokemon to begin with. Quickly though, before we talk about Palkia, be sure to check if you're subscribed to the channel or not, as many of you guys watching are not subscribed, so if 
you enjoy, I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you, and let's get back to the video. Origin Palkia, on the other hand, has huge issues, but a more simplistic at its base core. Out of the three, Palkia was always designed, at least to me, as a faster and stronger dragon type creation Pokemon, and its origin form keeps up with that. Origin Palkia's role is much more defined than Dialga, as it really wants to compete with powerful dragon types in the metagame or strong Pokemon in general. Now, unlike Dialga where I said 20 in special defense is subtle, speed is a stat that really determines a lot. It's quite literally, as False Wipe Gaming said, everything to a competitive battle. Thus, automatically, Palkia Origin is much better than its original form because it has a higher speed stat alongside its item that increases stab move coverages. All you can ask in a hyper offensive Pokemon. But just like Diago Origin, its move pool doesn't help out Palkia in any sort of way as well as its ability of pressure. Like I said before, pressure is completely useless and for a Pokemon that is restricted on a held item, these small things matter way more than a Pokemon like Eternatus that can make up for its pressure ability in other ways. And again, I still don't follow why Game Freak only changed Giratina Origin's ability out of the three. I'm sure there are countless abilities Origin Palkia could get, such as Water Absorb, which could be useful against Kyogre teams. Regardless, that is a problem that unfortunately does matter a lot in my opinion. Origin Palkia's move pool, in my opinion as well, is more complete than Dialga for the role it wants to fulfill as a hyper-offensive Pokemon. But to compete with the best, it's got some glaring issues in not having any notable setup moves. If we look at a Pokemon such as Black Curum, for example, on paper this thing looks worse than Origin Palkia. But Black Curum actually has two things over Origin Palkia that makes it an instant contender over its faster compadre. It has a held item slot, which already is huge, and has moves such as Scale Shot and Dragon Dance to help set up, making it for its 95 base speed while also in addition helping improve its offensive pressure. Eternus, as I stated before, is another pressure user, however, its free item slot and set of moves in things like Agility and Meteor Beam that make it easier and better to implement on teams. Palkia on the other hand has pressure and no free item slot which is fine in theory because all that item is doing is boosting its offense to deal more crushing blows. But it doesn't have a set of moves to compete with these other strong dragon types and keep in mind I didn't even list Maridon or Koridon and bulk up doesn't count for a Pokemon that is a special attacker. So already, it's quite literally just relying on raw power compared to these other setup freaks, and the final blow to its viability comes down to the metagame, which also does some favor for it. As mentioned before, there are better and more prominent strong dragon types that can set up. You have top dogs such as Maridon and Koridon, and even NDM to compete with, not to mention things like Fluttermane, which is faster, Iron Bundle with Freeze Dry, etc. Competing with these Pokemon, it's a daunting task to really stand out. Now, if you notice, Ribombi with Sticky Webs is very viable Pokemon, and theoretically a good strat for it. But the question is, why would you use a Pokemon that is more limited to Snowball teams when you grab something like Black Kyurem, which is an easier time, and theoretically speaking, then making more of a bigger threat to worry about because it's easier to set up and snowball on the other opponent's side. These types of things limit Palkia Origin from being a top dog in normal Uber's competitive play, and why it's shunned down to the no viability zone in this tier. Thankfully though, with the help of Kind Square, this origin form has found a place in the home of Uber's UU, which if you guys want to go check out the Discord server, links to that are down below. Speaking of limiting though, be sure to check out this video where I talk about the worst Paradox Pokemon to be released in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet singles metagame and comment down below your thoughts on these two Pokemon and any other videos you want me to cover. Join the Chompy Discord and with that, thanks for watching as always.